Hello, folks. Pastor Rocky Branch. Hope you're doing great today. Well, very cold this morning. Well, not terribly, but cold enough. Say amen. But frost everywhere, you know, and the car's covered, all that cool stuff. I mean, that's what happens. And, you know, we're always part of that. And, you know, weather changes. It goes up and down. I mean, it, you know, one day, beautiful. Of course, it was beautiful yesterday afternoon. And uh, through Saturday, actually, we've really been blessed as far as weather goes, even though it's a little cold. But we're still blessed. And, of course, in this area, you have, as we all know that live in this area, you have four seasons just right on clockwork, and that's one of the things that draws people here. But, you know, one of the things that doesn't change is the Lord, and our position should not change in Him no matter what comes our way. Now, the challenges come our way, and one of the easiest things that has us to change in our dedication to the Lord is being tired. Because when you get running and you get run down and you get weary and you get things on your back and in your mind and then you get tired. Well, then when you get tired, you don't reach for your strength, which is the word, because we try to get it in other ways. One of the ways is to sleep or one of the ways is just to rest or one of the ways is just to go do something uh, maybe entertaining that we can relieve the mind. You know, people have said that for a long time. I need my mind to rest. I need to do something to get my mind off my troubles. Well, certainly the Bible is full of answers for us in every area, and this is no exception. Uh, the Bible reminds us, Come unto me, Jesus said, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Jesus said that. But one of the things we fail to do is because we don't actually see Jesus, it's hard for us sometimes to trust in him, even though we know he's there. But it's a faith issue. It's a flesh issue. And, well, it's either a victory or failure issue after we take those two into account and see what we do with either one of them. I want to read you a verse out of Isaiah. Now, listen to this. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Listen to that. Therefore, have my people gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Listen to the rest of the verse. And their honorable men are famished and the, their multitude dry up with thirst. Oh, my what a situation to find that people have gone into captivity because of their understanding not not being fulfilled of what God said he would do. Do you, do you find yourself today maybe going into captivity? The devil has got a lock on you because of what you're thinking, because of what's in your mind, what you're perceiving. Oh, listen, Satan's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says the devil's a lie, John 8, 44. So I'm to be encouraged today that I don't want to be in captivity. And then it says the honorable men are famished. Oh, my. The people that are honorable, that have been doing the right thing, have, over, have been overcome. Even the honorable can be in a famished situation when they don't trust God. Well, today's a day that we need to re-energize. Well, yesterday, of course, was church day, and if you went to church yesterday, hopefully you were blessed. Well, today is a day to put those things into action. Today's a day to do something about it. Today is a day to make a difference. Don't allow the blessings of God to fall at the doorstep of Monday morning, and let's leave those behind. Let's take what God has done. Now, you say, well, hey, you wasn't in my church yesterday. We didn't have such a good deal yesterday. Well, maybe not, but it's better than it could have been, maybe. And God promised that he would show up in your life, maybe not manifest the way you wanted it, but God still will show up. How good is God? Well, good, good all the time. Uh, so in this verse, therefore my people are gone in the captivity. Did you notice in this verse that Isaiah did not say my people have been carried into captivity. That means they would be taken by force. No, that's not what he said. He said, he said, therefore my people are gone. Those are action words. They're verbs. They are gone. They are willing to relinquish their right to be taken into captivity. You have a right today, a right to stand on the principles and the precepts of God's word. You have a right to be an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You have a right to have victory in Jesus Christ. My, what a blessing that is. You have a right. Therefore, 
my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. The honorable men are, are famished. And what did he say? Their multitudes dry up with thirst. Well, the Bible <coughs> reminds us that Jesus is the living water. He gives us that. In fact, I need a drink right now. Hang on. Good illustration. Hmm. That helps for the time being, but it won't be enough to get me through. But Jesus is enough. What did he say in John chapter 7? All ye that thirst, come to me, and out of your innermost beings there shall flow a river of living water. God wants to bless you today. He does not want you to go into captivity. He wants you to stand up strong and be right and have the knowledge of God that Matthew 19, 26, with God all things are possible. Say that with me. With God all things are possible. Say it again. With God all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. Well, if you do these things, God will bless you for it. God bless you. We love you. And goodbye.